Shortcuts in the Microsoft Windows environment are super useful, and you definitely need to learn some of these. What are shortcuts? Well, they're basically keys or combination of keys that does something on the screen as an alternative to using a mouse. Shortcuts are great for people like me who don't want to use my hands to leave the keyboard and to fumble around with the mouse. Or you might be in a situation where you don't actually have a functioning mouse. For me, I love shortcuts because I am lazy. Plus, I had carpal tunnel on my wrist, so I don't want to be using that mouse too much. I will also be covering how these shortcuts may be particularly useful in the digital forensics and incident response world. First off, I am mostly looking at shortcuts that are available with Windows 10 and 11, but most of what I will cover will work on versions of Windows before Windows 10. To check the build of Windows that you are running, we're going to be looking at our first shortcut, and that's just hitting the Windows key by itself, which will present you with the Start menu and allow you to enter a program to run. So at the search box, you can go ahead and enter W-I-N-V-E-R, Winver. And a pop-up will appear with the Windows version number, which includes the build. So I'm running Windows 10, build 19041. So my system has the clipboard history feature. And lastly, before we jump into the video, just a note that if you are using Mac hardware to run Windows, you will need to use the command key for the Windows key, and the options key will be your alt key. So let's continue with the Windows key. Now instead of tapping it once, I am going to hold down that Windows key, and then hold down the comma. This will change all of the active app windows to wireframes so that you can see the desktop. This could be of interest to the folks in the D4 world who is performing a live capture as this gives you an unobstructed view of the desktop so you can see the background picture and the icons on the desktop. When you let go of the windows and the comma keys, all the windows are restored. If you want a more permanent reveal of the desktop, you can do a wind and then the letter D for desktop to show the desktop. What this will do is that it's going to take away all of the open app windows and show you the desktop. And it, when you're done, you can go ahead and type Wind D again, and it will go ahead and restore everything just like it was before. You can also type Wind M to minimize all the windows to get to the desktop. However, I can't figure out how to get all the windows to come back. So this seems like a one-way deal. So I think Wind D is probably more useful for this purpose. The other nuanced difference is that some windows or some applications actually don't support minimization. So when you do the WinM, some of those might actually still stay on the desktop. Now let's take a look at the active apps that I am running. If I type and hold the Alt key and then type the Tab key, that will show me all the active apps and their windows. As long as I keep holding down the Alt key, I can hit Tab to highlight the next window in the sequence. Or I can hit Shift Tab to highlight the previous window. And as long as I hold down the Alt key, I can also use the four arrow keys to highlight a window. So I can go up and down and left and right. And once I let go of the Alt key, the window that is highlighted will unminimize and be the center of focus. This is useful in the D4 world as you can take a quick look at each of the applications of a live subject's machine and see what they're doing. As a D4 professional, you should also be checking for other desktops that the user may be using. So you can type the Windows key and then Tab to get the view of all of the desktops and the associated apps running in each desktop. And so up here you can see I have Desktop 1 and Desktop 2. And so once you have this page up, you can hover your mouse over each desktop to see what is running in that desktop. And then clicking in that desktop selection will put you into that desktop. And of course, there is a shortcut that can help you navigate between each virtual desktop without seeing all of them at once, like you do with Win Tab. So what you need to do is type Win Control Left Arrow or Win Control Right Arrow to go between the desktops. The next block of shortcuts I'm going to look at involves the taskbar on the bottom. 
where you have either pinned the commonly used apps or it's currently populated with active apps. If you want to select a different app or window to highlight, you can use Alt-Tab as we discussed earlier, or else you can type Win-T for taskbar. What this is going to do is that it's going to highlight the first pinned item down here. And as you keep on hitting Win-T, it will cycle through the apps on that taskbar. And basically, it will cycle through all of the tasks whether they are launched or not, unlike Alt-Tab, which only gives you the active apps. And once the app is highlighted, if it's already launched and has multiple windows, you can use the left and right arrows to select the window that you want to focus on. And then when you click Enter, that window will now be the focus. If you happen to highlight an app which has not been launched, it will go ahead and launch that app. So another quicker way to get an app is to do the Win key with a number. And the number will correspond to the apps in that taskbar. So for example, I have FTK Imager as the second app on my taskbar. So if I do Win and then the number 2, the FTK Imager window will now be the focus. And for the Defer world, a lot of times you will need to launch apps in an admin mode in order to be able to access certain files and programs. So for example, if I want to launch PowerShell in the admin mode, I can do Win-T right, to get to the taskbar and then arrow over so that the PowerShell icon is highlighted. And then from here, I can type Control, Shift, Enter. And then PowerShell will now be launched in the admin mode. As you can see here in the status bar, this one is the one that I just launched. It's in admin mode. And this one over here is the one that I had launched before. And it's just launched as a regular user. All right, so we went through the Windows key earlier, which brings up the Start menu. The other useful menu is the Quick Link menu. And we can bring that up with Win and X. And once this menu is up, I can then hit the underlined letter in this menu that corresponds to the items that are listed here. So for example, if I hit the letter Y, I will get the System panel. And in the D4 world, I frequently look at the uh, systems panel here, the network connections, disk management, task manager, and settings menus. So this is actually really helpful for me to just do Windows X and then get all of these things up and running so I can check these out. And there is a quicker way of bringing up the task manager, right? I think most people know this is Control Shift Escape. And then the quick way of bringing up the settings menu is just window I as an in information. And one of the coolest things I learned recently is that of the clipboard history or paste buffer. And to access it, you hit win V. Right, usually it, you do control V to, to paste, right? So in this case, you hit win V. And you will see this panel come up. And one thing to note is that you need to be running build 17.666 of Windows or later. And you have to turn on this feature. So here you can see that I have not turned it on yet. So let's go ahead and click this and turn it on now. And then what I can do is go ahead and go launch my Edge browser, go to some different pages, and go ahead and copy a bunch of things. So I'm going to copy some text. And then I'm going to copy some links. And then let's see if I can also copy some images. So I'm going to click on this image here, just bring up in the window and then go ahead and just do a copy. And as I go back to my clipboard history by doing Win V, you can see now that it has all of the stuff that I had copied before, whether I had pasted or not, doesn't matter. It, it's basically been copied at one point or another. You can see just regular text down in here. You can see links that I copied as well as the graphic. Right, so all of these are in the clipboard history or paste buffer. And one last thing I want to show is the changing of the layout of the windows. Again, this is actually really useful if you are actually doing a lot of work in PowerShell. And what you can do is you can snap your windows to an edge by doing windows and then the left or right arrow. 
And depending on which arrow you use, it will snap the window to that side of the screen. So here I'm going to snap this window to the right side of the screen with the wind and then the right arrow key. And you can see it basically takes up that half of the screen. And if I hit win left arrow, the window goes back to the original size. And the same thing happens if I hit the win left arrow again, the window snaps to the left side of the screen and takes up that half of the screen. And I can put it back again with the win right arrow key. Next, I'm going to go ahead and do win up arrow. And this window is now going to take up the entire screen if that's what I want. And if it's not what I want, I can restore it back with win down arrow. And lastly, with a regular window, if I just do windows key and then down arrow here, the window is going to be minimized. But I can bring it back if I do windows and then up arrow key. So now uh, I can have my PowerShell windows side by side by clicking on this one and then doing windows right arrows and then clicking on this guy here, and then Windows left arrow. So now I have my two windows taking up the whole screen aligned next to each other. And so um, this could be very useful. So that's just some of the Windows shortcuts that I have found useful for the Digital Forensics and Incidents Response applications. They're more associated with using the File Explorer and also with the various web browsers. Those will be covered in a different video. And I'm sure that there are many other shortcuts that you use daily, so please feel free to share them in the comments below. And yes, D4 folks, by using these shortcuts on the subject machine, you are making changes to that machine, but sometimes it is necessary to do a quick triage of the machine before shutting it down or continuing with the live capture process. Just remember to document all that you do and see. For more Windows Forensics videos, watch these videos here. Click on the blue monkey to subscribe so that I can afford to pay for those Neutron Dance lessons. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.